Good day everyone. I am Shabana Begum working as a English teacher at RS Krishnan Higher Secondary School BHL Trichrapalli. I am humbled to bring to limelight a documentary which means a film that is educational and which also tells a true story. My documentary is based on my perspective on detailed analysis of national education policy 2020 and how it will affect students and the future of our country. Yes, an investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam has rightly said, creativity is the key to success in the future and primary education is where teachers can bring creativity in children at that level. The national education policy is going to be an important milestone in the Indian economy. They have started focusing on the education system because they know that the Indian youth are going to be the foundation stone of future. True to the quote by Erasmus, the main hope of a nation lies in the proper education of its youth. On July 29th, the new cabinet approved the national education policy after a 34-year gap. Previously, it was known as the National Policy on Education (NPE), which was approved 34 years ago in 1986. In 1968, India's first education policy was launched during Indira Gandhi government. In 1986, Rajiv Gandhi's government launched the second national education policy, and in the year 1992, it was modified under P. V. Narasimha Rao's government. In 2015, when Shrimati Smriti Irani was the HRD minister, a new committee was formed, and its chairman was Shri T. S. R. Subramanian. And the report was submitted on 7th May 2016. After this, under the steward leadership of ISRO Chief Padma Vibhushan, Dr. K. Kasturi Rangan, another committee consisting of nine members was formed. These nine members drafted the national education policy in 2019 that finally came into existence as New Education Policy 2020. Now let us go down the memory lane to register in your minds the launching of the New Education Policy. Yes, that And golden thanks, moment. Thanks, uh, Professor Aparo. the chance of vice chancellor uh, for those introductory remarks uh, i would like to thank you and the management of the university for giving me this unique privilege of being with all of you today morning share my own thoughts and also give you a gist of the kind of policy that uh, has been uh, prepared uh, by the committee set up for this purpose and which is currently in the public domain uh, one of the important task we as the members of the committee and many others who were a part of the preparation either in the drafting or in many other cases decided that this kind of a policy certainly needs interaction considerably with all those who are interested in the matter of education and so we have taken upon ourselves to interact with the public to the you know, Yeah, with, with the knowledgeable segment of the society to the maximum extent possible from our side certainly look at the earlier policies look at the policies which are to be done even today because they are relevant and where they have gone wrong or where we could not do to the same extent that the policy wanted it to be done what is the reasons why we could not do it so these are questions certainly that is to be asked and we have asked for ourselves in this question in the context of formulating this policy but you will understand that It's 25 years since we formulated the last policy, and there have been extensive changes in the society since the last policy: social, economic, industrial, cultural. Each has its own ramifications on education. Then increasing and ubiquitous technology usage, using internet. If you if you really look at it, internet was had to make a major foray into the uh, society at the time when the last policy was done, and you knew the kind of implications in the impact that it is creating. on all aspects of the human endeavor and particularly in this country and in education in particular so this is something which was not foreseen in the preparation of the last uh, last particular policy the fourth industrial revolution is around the corner and there's going to have really disrupting impact on way understanding i mentioned about a little earlier the need to understand the pitfalls in the earlier programs and the earlier policies that what is it we need to how to be revisited how do we see it in the present context and where they are still relevant and if so how do we tackle this addressing of course the questions of uh, where we went wrong 
And of course, when I met the minister at that time, it was Javadekar Ji. He he told me only one thing that uh, don't create this policy as a fine tuning of the what what has gone so far. I would like to have a policy which is valid at least for two decades. So we should make sure that this policy will be applicable to developments and evolution of things in the next two decades. And at that particular point, if necessary, we should be able to fine tune this policy to make it sure that one more decade it should be valid. So it's a kind of a thing in which we have to give a lot of thought because it's a 30 year period over which we have to make this policy valid or applicable. And secondly, 20, we have a very clear cut directive thing that in 20, for 20 years it should be valid. So there was. I am all struck because on paper, the national education policy is picture perfect. The three main objectives of the committee was to improve the quality of the education, credibility of education and addressing the gaps in implementation. These are the three important changes in the new national policy 2020. Firstly, HRD Minister now renamed as Ministry of Education. Secondly, GDP investment in education is increased from 1.6% to 6% and thirdly, focusing on gross enrollment ratio. Now let us try to understand the reasons behind launching National Education Policy 2020. As I have informed earlier, by 2035, at least 50% of students should complete higher education. This is only possible if they start giving first or start reforming the system. Secondly, it is to reduce root learning. Let this quote by Albert Einstein be nailed in our teacher's mind that education is not the learning of facts but the training of the mind to think. Besides that, Chetan Bhagat also had once quoted that in our education system, we are taught to munch figures and remember them for lifetime. But does it help? We are not taught how to make decisions. I believe all of you would agree with me that as a student, we were overburdened for learning something which is of no use now and we have landed in a very pitiful state. For instance, I was taught to paint during my computer period when I was in my class 8. Isn't it that outdated now? Do we need a change? Do we need a reform? Absolutely yes. Does in root learning, problem solving is not prioritized and real life application is ignored. But when you look at the global trend right now, a student should know practical application too. We all have learned physics at least up to 10th or 12th. Isn't it teachers? But how many of us know to change the bulb in our home? Have you ever pondered about it, dear teachers? Let me give you another example. If I ask your students to write a job application, I am sure a majority of your students would make mistakes or would not be able to write. Why is that? Have you ever wondered? The reason is we have not taught them how we can use our knowledge from the practical domain. Thirdly, there is no hard separation of streams. Earlier, we were forced to learn the subjects available only in our school. For instance, I am an English teacher, but I had no option to take humanities then. Instead, I studied biology with mathematics in my school days. So literally, I have invested my two years in something which is not relevant to me right now. Hence, the government through this national education policy wants the students to study what he or she is interested in. True to the quote, all students can learn and succeed but not on the same day in the same way. Now let us take a peek at the five key proposals. Firstly, the new education policy proposes to change the school's academic structure from 10 plus 2 years of schooling format to 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 years format. These are the major reforms that is changes at school level. Board exams will be based on knowledge and application. Occasional courses will start from 6 onwards. Report cards will be based on skills and capabilities. Mother tongue to be the medium of instruction till 5th grade. 100% cross enrollment ratio expected in preschool to secondary level. By 2030, government investment in education sector to reach 6% of GDP and so on. If you look at the entire life of a school student, we had 10 plus 2 system. But now, according to the national education policy, this structure has been divided into four parts. 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4. Isn't that amazing? Now let me highlight a few key proposals, which are practiced in foreign countries 
and which are the key secrets of being a developed nation students learn coding from class 6 which is already followed in china and which is their success mantra too mother tongue to be the medium of instruction till fifth grade that is adopting local language which is the success mantra of europe and thirdly a 360 degree progress card which will include self assessment peer assessment and teacher assessment let us discuss one by one nursery kindergarten prep class 1 and class 2 all five are clubbed together as phase 1 of school when a student steps into class 3 this is the second phase of schooling called the preparatory stage where you have classes 3 4 and 5 in these three years the student is taught basics and fundamentals when the student steps into class 6 amazing development takes place now he enters the third phase of schooling that is in classes 6 7 and 8 he is introduced and taught different subjects so that the child will understand where his interest lies for instance if i asked you which is your favorite movie genre you would say crime out of many in order to understand your choice you should have watched all the genres thus in this phase he is introduced to different subjects plus occasional courses are also introduced so internships are given which is something very new i hope you would have watched this movie to all the boys who have loved before is one of my favorite movie in which there is a scene this girl laura goes to an old age home as a part of the school curriculum and she deals with the old people there she had to arrange a certain events for them and she learns a lot in that process this is what is occasional training or internship because what you learn from internship can never be taught from books so the efforts are made to make knowledge more practical in this stage coding is also introduced till now coding was taught only to computer students and the bachelor's degree we need to understand that when a person codes a lot of things are happening in his brain now when the student steps in his last phase of schooling that is classes 9 10 11 and 12 in this phase a student has the choice to study any academical subject or choose even from a co curricular subject for instance as a student i can take take botany accountancy dance and my fifth subject can be history too wow mind blowing so i can club arts science and commerce together and make a different structure for myself so co curricular activities are also considered as subjects now isn't it amazing thus they have restructured everything i'm just hoping my fingers crossed that the way it looks on paper is also implemented in the same way true to the quote of mahatma gandhi that the future depends on what you do today besides that i strongly believe teachers are the most responsible and important members of society because their professional efforts affect the fate of the earth thanks for watching this is me shabana begum signing off have a blissful day